The federal government has announced the resumption of domestic flights in the country. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, announced this in a tweet on Wednesday. According to him, the Abuja and Lagos airports will resume domestic operations on July the 8th, while the Kano, Port Harcourt, Oweri and Madugri airports would resume on the 11th. Other airports are also expected to resume operations on the 15th. Sirika, however, noted that a date for the international airports will be announced in due course. Now, Walesh uh, Shadari, aviation editor for Daily Telegraph, joins us via Skype to give insight on the choice of Lagos and Abuja airports. Good to have you, Mr. Shadari. Thank you for having me. Good morning. We are glad that we finally got hold of you. Uh, now, let's begin. <laughs> Do you have an insight to why Abuja and Lagos first? Why the choice of these two states? Oh, thank you very much. Um, yesterday, we woke up to the news uh, from the uh, from the Minister of Aviation, um, Mr. Hadi Sirika, uh, outlining uh, uh, resumption of flight uh, for July 18, uh, July 8, and uh, July 11 and 15. Uh, but the two airports that are going to be open for now are Lagos and Abuja, mm. and um, the. The reason for that is not far-fetched in the sense that um, these are the two major airports. Traffic to uh, to Nigeria are usually uh, to, to these two major airports, Lagos and Abuja. Uh, Lagos for the commercial, as commercial nerve center of Nigeria, and Abuja as the political headquarters of Nigeria. So uh, most times, the traffic is usually between these two cities. And because the economy has not been opened fully, so we see it as a test run for uh, opening up some uh, other airports we have in Nigeria. And if you look at it, um, I think two, last month, the, uh, the aviation regulatory body um, listed five airports that will be open to flight term. Um, operations starting from um, as we begin to ease up um, lockdown on uh, air transportation and these airports are Lagos, Abuja, Kanu, uh, um, Port Harcourt and um, Oweri. I think um, Boronu has been added to it I think because of the uh, military operations in that area so that um, uh, the troops can move easily um, when um, flight resumes fully. And if you also look at the test run that, um, that was done recently, preparatory to uh, resumption of flight, you'll find out that um, attention was concentrated more on these um, six airports. But as from 15th of July, all other airports will be open. But these two airports are just like a test run um, to look at how we have prepared our preparedness uh, post-COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, it is in the right direction. We need to test the water, not with our two feet, but with one, mm. to see how far we have gone and how prepared we are uh, in ensuring that um, we have done well in, um, you know, maybe uh, reducing the spread of um, um, coronavirus. Uh, let's talk about uh, price. The, how sustainable is this price regime? You know, yes, the fare will be increased, but will there not be breach of protocol for pecuniary, uh, the pecuniary gain without sanction? How do we regulate that? No, 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 no. Uh, you can't really sanction airlines if they increase their fare because um, it's a deregulated market. It's highly liberalized market. But at the same time, uh, you don't... Um, uh, take advantage of situation to say you want to increase fare. Even if you do it now, you're not going to make money because a lot of people are not going to travel. Mm -hmm. The traffic will still be very, very low because also you also need to look at the economic situation of a lot of people. A lot of people have been followed. Uh, airlines have caught um, uh, passengers. They've sacked their passenger or reduced them. Um, their the salaries or they have asked their workers to go home not only limited to airlines every strata of the economy has been badly damaged by uh, covid 19. 
So it doesn't make sense for you to increase their fare astronomically because you want to make money to cover your cost. Mm -hmm. These costs are these costs are not going to be uh, 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 to be made uh, overnight. It has to take a long period of time, maybe right. two or three years before the airlines can come back to uh, normal operation. So they are still going to run at a loss. And also, we also need to take into consideration the social distance in the middle seat uh, allowance on board aircraft, which is going to cut airlines uh, capacity by almost 40 percent. So it's something they also have to deal with. But there's no way airfare will not be adjusted mm. marginally to cover a lot of costs. You know, everything has gone on. F, uh, the dollar the dollar to naira um, exchange has also gone up so it, it takes a lot to begin to say okay we are going to uh, go with the not uh, the uh, the first that we we, we used to do it's not going to be but it's going to be adjusted marginally maybe right. five ten percent because if you do that astronomically uh you're already sending people away people who don't really want to fly you're sending them away. And remember, they have competitors. Who are their competitors? The Ekene Dilichuku of this <laughs> world are there. So, mm. so, and people will look at it. Uh, how will I spend 35, 40,000 Naira to go from here to Oweri? I'd rather go by road that, you know, despite the dangers we face on the road, but people will still say, oh, no, 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 no. If they don't have another Naira, option, uh, since they have an option, yeah. Exactly. They will say with 10,000 Naira, I'll get to my destination. I will just take an adjacent of 200 Naira and rest for a day, and I'm okay. All right, let's but, talk about, uh, tell us more now about some of these protocols peculiar to aviation industry. You know, for instance, an airline says passengers should arrive three hours before yeah. flight for, <laughs> for a local flight. Why? <laughs> Honestly, when that protocol came out, when we saw it, we were surprised. Not only for domestic airlines, but mm -hmm. for international flights. If you have to travel to London, you have to be, you know, be there at the airport five hours before, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> before departure. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot because you also you look at it that, oh, if you are going to a place like London now, you need to be at the airport 12 o'clock for a flight that is around the 12 midnight. So it's going to take a lot from people. It's going to even make people not want, uh, not want to fly. I said they have a very, very uh, cogent reason why they must fly. In the next few months, it's going to be tough for air travel. People are still going to watch out and say, OK, how are we going to do? We have people who don't even want to spend two hours in the airport before they do their check. But now you have to tell them to be at the airport five hours before their departure. Mm. And you also need to look at the uh, cumbersomeness of, you know, um, um, uh, 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 the processing. They will have to check your luggage, which takes a lot because we don't have the infrastructure, we don't have the equipment uh, to make it easier for passengers to be processed at the airport. If, if you go to other airports that, you know, process over 20 million uh, passengers annually, because they have infrastructure, they have technology, you don't even see anybody inside the terminal because the, the technology processes them easily and very fast. But unlike what we have in Nigeria that you everything, almost virtually everything is done manually. So it, it makes travel more difficult. It makes travel not enjoyable, very stressful. We shouldn't be. Uh, but you don't also blame them because of um, uh, a lot of things. They are going to take their time to check people. They are going to take their time to ensure that everybody you know comply with the protocol that uh, mm. the federal government has laid down so in another way we can't really blame them because they want safety for everybody mm. but like what i said it's going to take the joy out of um, air travel all right thank you so very much uh, mr mm. shadari for finally joining us and you know bringing insights to all of this conversation we hope that we're able to sort out all of the things around aviation in this country and move quite forward stay safe out there it is our thank you very much for having right. me